I gotta say, the ARC A770 definitely has got style. Even with just the default RGB, that defused light bar looks really, really nice. Really nice looking GPU. So in this video, it's finally here. Intel Arc A770, this is gonna be my full review and comparison against how it stacks up against the competition. We're gonna be comparing it to last gen, current gen, and even older GPUs from Team Red and Team Green. So if you're interested in this type of content, stay tuned. First up, A770, it's available in eight or 16 gigabyte models and will be sold by AIBs such as ASRock and Acer. The launch retail price of the 16 gigabyte model I have here is 349. At this price point, I really feel like the 16 gigabyte model seems like an excellent value because historically, when you think about it, there's only been a few GPUs to offer this much VRAM. Namely, the only ones that I can think of are really the Radeon 7, which had an MSRP of $699 back in 2019, but that was very short lived. The current gen RX 6800 and the 6900 XT. I mean, those also offer that much video memory, but they exist in a much higher performance tier. Next is what I believe is the rival this GPU was originally intended to compete against. That GPU being the Radeon RX 6700 XT. This GPU from AMD comes with 12 gigabytes of video memory, which means that it should be relevant for 1440p gaming for the next several years. Its original retail price when it launched well over a year ago was 479. Being priced like a gaming console, I really feel this is the intended MSRP that Intel sought to price the A770 at initially, though because of all the driver issues that we've been seeing at release, they were forced to lower the launch MSRP. I fear that because of this, the 16 gigabyte model may be short lived with Intel opting to sell the majority of these through channel partners in the form of the 8 gigabyte variant. At time of filming, the CC700 XT can be purchased from sites like Newegg for around $389. The third GPU in this comparison is the RX 5700 XT. This GPU launched back in 2019 alongside the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs and the X570 platform. This GPU is notable for being the world's first PCI Gen 4 graphics card. This is the GPU that I feel the ARC A770 is forced to contend with in its early days, since this GPU today largely represents the performance of cards such as the legendary GTX 1080 Ti, as well as others like the RTX 2080. Equipped with 8GB of GDDR6 and a TDP of 225 watts, on paper, this GPU appears similar to Intel's new ARC A770. Though, as we'll soon see, the new A770's looks can be deceiving. Vega64 is here because I wanted to include an older PCI Gen 3 GPU to showcase whether or not Intel's new ARC GPU is worth upgrading to from these older Gen 3 GPUs. The old Vega card is pretty much identical to an RX 5600 XT and just 10% slower than the RX 6600. So if you have either of those GPUs, you can estimate how your own GPU stacks up against Intel's ARC. It has eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory and originally debuted at $549 in the summer of 2017. Lastly, I included the GTX 1080 for several reasons. It's my favorite Nvidia GPU and it's roughly the same as the RTX 2060 in terms of overall performance. So if you currently have a 2060, think of the 1080's results as a proxy as to how your current GPU compares to the ARC graphics card. In my opinion, this GPU features the most stylish looking blower style cooler I've ever seen. It's equipped with 8GB of GDDR5X memory, something that makes it kind of unique. The Founders Edition model shown here had an MSRP of $699 back in May of 2016 making it the oldest GPU in this comparison. All right, so for the test setup, we are running a Ryzen 7 5800X with the Asus ROG X570 Crosshair Hero motherboard, uh, RAM 64 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws, and a Seasonic Prime Titanium 1000 watt PSU. So this is the exact same setup that I used on the live stream on the launch day for this GPU. So basically the same system as what we used to benchmark this system. So let's get on with the benchmarks. So the first game 
that I tested was Elden Ring. So this is the game that I kind of think is going to be game of the year, or at least in my mind it's game of the year. Uh, but as you can see here, Ark does pretty good. It actually it actually tied with the 6700 XT, which is what I consider its, its true rival GPU. Uh, I've been saying that for over a year. But you can see 1080p, they both average the same 76 FPS, so it's literally within margin of error. Um, and then the older GPUs all kind of are well behind. If you bump it up to 1440p, uh, again, the ARC does surprise in the sense that it, it's right up there with the 6700 XT, and the others just fall even further back. Um, and then at 4K, I did decide to include 4K for all the tests, and it it created a lot of extra work. Um, so props to those other YouTube channels that take a lot of time to do these benchmarks, because I, I didn't realize how much work this would end up being especially when you have more than like two or three GPUs. So uh, yeah, 4K, I don't consider any of them playable for Elden Ring. Uh, none of them are at 60 FPS average, uh, but you know, in general, I would say I never really considered the 6700 XT to be a 4K GPU. So up next we have Resident Evil Village. So this is another really interesting game. It's a single player game. Uh, but I think it uses the RE engine and it's a very good showing of what ARC can do when it's using a modern game engine uh, with the drivers that are relatively well optimized, at least out of the gate, for DX12 titles. So, as you can see here, way above 60, you know, we're even way above 120. So, you know, we're talking 180 FPS. So yeah, it doesn't win outright compared to the 6700 XT. Above it up to 1440p, now we have, uh, you know, the the lead between the the 6700 XT and the A770. It kind of like stretches out further in favor of the Radeon card, um, but as you can see, it doesn't really fall behind that much. So it's still largely playable. Uh, I mean, even the older GPUs are pretty good at 1440p. And this kind of goes back to what I was thinking, where I feel like the we're, we're kind of past the point where 1440p is hard to do. You know, what this kind of illustrates is that you can get pretty good performance out of a relatively uh, moderately priced GPU, let's say, you know, in the $300, $400 price range. So we bump it up to 4K. So surprisingly, I didn't expect this GPU to average above 60 at 4K, uh, but in Resident Evil Village, it does it. So uh, that's pretty impressive, I would say. So it's one of the few titles where this GPU does actually hit above 60 at 4K. So next we're moving on to an older game. So here I benched uh, uh, Witcher 3. So this is an older single player game, but it's a very popular game. I know a lot of people uh, on the live stream were asking me to do, um, Cyberpunk 2077, but unfortunately I don't have that game. Um, but, you know, Witcher 3 is an older game. It's a DX11 game, so I think it does give us a good idea of what you can get out of ARC on a DX11. Because I think a lot of a lot of people out there, there was a lot of speculation that DX11 wouldn't work that well on ARC. And, I mean, I did encounter some weird color banding issues with this game every now and then. I, now, I did kind of show an example of that in my first impressions. Uh, where it kind of distorted the f it's almost like the text on the screen became out of focus it's almost like there was some kind of weird rendering bug but that affected not just gaming um, but just general desktop use so that, that might just be a more general bug i don't know if it's specific to witcher 3 but it is worth pointing that out like the colors did kind of get darker than they should have been uh, but you know at 1080p largely playable if we bump it up to 1440p it's still largely playable uh, and then if we go, uh, what's interesting is here you can see it doesn't really it doesn't really fall too far behind the leading GPU, um, so it's kind of right up there with it, which is surprising. And what also surprises me is that it it keeps a pretty good lead above the 5700 XT, which is what I was thinking was where this GPU was going to have to end up contending against uh, at least in the first couple of months of release due to driver optimizations. Uh, but if we bump it up to 4K, you know, now, surprisingly, at 4K, the A770 is now actually winning. But in general, you can see, you know, it's it's still right up there. What this tells me is that this GPU 
does have a lot of horsepower uh, and it can punch above its weight in terms of what it can actually do at higher resolutions. I, I really think that 1440p though is where this GPU really shines. So Red Dead Redemption 2, so this is another popular game that a lot of people were requesting. So uh, yeah, we, we're going to put the, uh, the results here, but unfortunately this GPU doesn't do too well. I mean you can see at 1080p it's, al it's already at 77 FPS. 1440p here, yeah, it's still above 60. So what's interesting here is, you know, even you bump the resolution. So again, the general theme that keeps coming across here is that it's a, a pretty good 1440p graphics card. And then we go to 4K, and then all of a sudden, none of them are really playable. You know, the 1080, the once mighty GTX 1080 falls below 30 FPS. Moving on to the next game, Borderlands 3 at full HD. So you can see, this is an example of a game that is not optimized for ARC at all. So right now, it just straight up loses to even the really old GTX 1080 and the old Vega. They're both right up there with the 5700XT. What surprised me actually in this title, as I was benchmarking it, was how, how close the older GPUs were to the 5700XT. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting there to be a wider gap. So as we bump it up to Quad HD, now you can see what's surprising here is if you look, I didn't see any difference in the Intel results. So which means that there's definitely some kind of driver overhead problem because the fact that you bump up the resolution but the, the FPS stays exactly the same uh, as it was at 1080p means that there's some kind of driver overhead bottleneck happening. So it's not, it's, clearly it's not a CPU bottleneck because you can see the other GPUs do scale accordingly, um, but this one does not for some reason. And then if we go to 4K, you know, that's a huge tax on performance for all the GPUs. Now they all kind of close in on each other, and now ARC doesn't look so bad, uh, but, you know, at this resolution, none of them really look good at all. So next up is Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. So this is a very interesting title, when I was testing it, I actually spent a lot of time benchmarking this title specifically because what's cool about this benchmark is it's a standalone app, almost like uh, like a Unigen Valley or Unigen Heaven type benchmark uh, where it gives you a score and it shows you like the frame chart as it's running the benchmark. It's also a very long benchmark. So it, it, it tries to check for like CPU bottleneck, GPU bottleneck, uh, you know, the, the VRAM, all that kind of stuff. So it's actually a really nice benchmark. Um, and it gives you a score, and we'll go over that uh, in a little bit. But if you look at 1080p results, uh, this this really surprised me. This is the one game that I feel like the Pascal architecture from NVIDIA was very, very well optimized for this title in particular. I remember when the, I think it was Heaven Sword. It was like the first expansion, which was when Square Enix introduced the DirectX 11 based client. Uh, very impressive stuff from NVIDIA on this particular title. As we bump up to QHD 1440p, you know, now ARC has, now it starts to show its potential, right? So here it doesn't decrease as much as the other GPUs. Uh, so now it's actually in second place. Whereas before, you know, it was kind of in fourth place. So, and then if we go up to 4K, everybody takes a massive drop in performance across the board. And, you know, only the 6700 XT is able to average above 60. Um, I also did show the minimum. This is probably the only benchmark that I did that I recorded the minimum. Um, but yeah, so this kind of shows you, you know, in terms of the minimums, right? Like, our, there, was a, there was a presentation slide that I, I think Ryan Shroud or Tom Peterson, somebody showed, like, where the bottlenecks were, where they could improve. And I kind of think this slide further illustrates or confirms that uh, that claim that they had a lot of optimizations that they could do to, to increase performance. If we look at the overall scores, these are just kind of the scores for those wondering what the score numbers look like um, at each resolution. So blue is going to be 1080p, uh, orange is 1440, and then you have gray at 4K. So that's just kind of how it turned out. And then we've got Halo Infinite Full HD. So this game... Arc doesn't like it. It just doesn't do that well. Uh, it's below 60. If we go up to 1440, it does fall further back as well. So now we're at 42. 
you know, whereas the only one really here at 1440 that would give you a good experience is the 6700 XT. And if we go to 4K, now not even the 6700 XT is what I consider playable for a first person shooter like this. So next I did want to bench another first person shooter. So this one's off of Origins Clients. This is going to be Battlefield 5 at Full HD. So the good news is all of them are playable at 1080p. Uh, well above 100 FPS, but as you can see arc doesn't really do that. Well, the numbers don't really line up uh, based off of what the GPU uh, Is spec out with in terms of the hardware. So for a, such a big die uh, Versus these smaller die GPUs with one exception being Vega uh, You know the fact that Vega a GPU from 2017 is, is even beating arc is it's kind of embarrassing uh, but it does kind of show you how the performance for this GPU is kind of all over the place, right? Like it's sometimes it's way up, sometimes it's down, or you know, it's just an inconsistent, I guess is the word. So at QHD, you know, it doesn't really lose that much FPS. Um, so it does creep up above Vega and the 1080 uh, to third place, but it's still losing to the 5700 XT. And then if we look at QHD, or UHD rather, so at 4K, you know, the, the good thing is that ARC is above 60 for 4K in this title, which is very surprising considering how how poor the performance looked at 1080p. Uh, the fact that it's still holding 70, and it's now roughly equal to the 5700 XT. It's kind of interesting to look at how, how much of a drop the 5700 XT experiences going to the higher resolutions. I mean, even the the 6700 XT, you're talking about almost a 50% drop going up to 4K. That's that's pretty insane. So Civilization 6, um, I wanted to do an RTS, and I don't have that many RTSs. I don't really play that many of them this, anymore. Um, but Civ 6 was one of them in my library, so I was able to put this one out there. Uh, yeah, Arc, it does okay. Uh, it's not the best, uh, but it's it's a little bit disappointing again because it has so much compute in terms of how big the die is. Uh, what it actually is equipped with, the 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but see, it seems like none of that stuff seems to really matter. Um, and I I feel like if you were to get the 8 gigabyte model, you wouldn't really notice any difference in performance. If we bump up to 1440p, you know, it's now it's kind of third place again. Was it third? Yeah, it was always third place. So what's interesting is the other GPUs, particularly the AMD GPUs, uh, they seem to take a lot of FPS drop as the resolution goes up um, although nvidia's does drop quite a bit too there um, and then we go to 4k and you know now good news is a 4k all of them are above 60 that's that's pretty impressive stuff but this isn't really that new of a game so power consumption here are the power consumption numbers so this is kind of the th this kind of shows you where it's at in terms of efficiency so obviously compared to the cc700 xt it falls short by a large margin um, because that GPU pretty much beat it across the board uh, and even even the 5700 XT might actually look like better perf per watt so a lot a lot of work to do on Intel's driver team side in terms of optimizing this GPU and the overall platform and the gr and the drivers and everything but I think pretty pretty much everybody watching this video at this point uh, probably already knows that, so I don't really harp too much on this. Uh, I did do some noise tests. I used my uh, smartphone just to measure it, but then I do have some clips for the noise test, so I will show that here to give you guys an idea of what each of these GPUs sound like at full load while gaming. Alright, so we're going to do a little bit of a noise test while benchmarking. I might as well do the noise test. So right now, this is going to be taken while benchmarking Final Fantasy XIV. Alright, so that's the ARC uh, GPU at full load. Alright, CC700 XT noise test. This is kind of how it is from far away and this is while doing a bench run at 4k
All right, now we have the 5700 XT. This is gonna be the noise test for this one. Benchmarking the same game, Final Fantasy XIV at full load. This is gonna be the blower style reference card for the 5700 XT. And it is worth noting that all these fan profiles are the stock defaults for all graphics cards tested. Alright, next up for noise test we have the RX Vega 64. You can see it's at full load, it has that cool G GPU tachometer. Here we go. All right, the final noise test. This is going to be the GTX 1080 Founders Edition. Uh, you can see it's interesting. This only has a single eight pin. Alright, so I'd say from that noise test, you can tell, so the ARC GPU is very quiet, so is the 6700 XT, both of them have pretty much the same noise profile. Uh, out of the three blower style coolers, the GTX 1080 was definitely the quietest of the three, um, but it is worth noting that that card does only have a single 8 pin, so it uses a lot less power than the other two. That's one of the reasons why the GTX 1080 uh, is my favorite blower style cooler and one of my favorite NVIDIA GPUs of all time. Now we can come to the conclusion. Uh, the average for 1080p, you can see here on the screen, the 6700 XT wins, and it's kind of what I expected. Um, and this goes back to my community poll uh, earlier on that I had sent out yesterday asking you guys whether or not you thought that the a, the A770 would win against the RX 5700 XT and it looks like here at least in 1080p the victor is the 5700 XT at least from the bench tests that we've done uh, in this review video if we move up to 1440p however the roles reverse and now the A770 wins by a small margin so it now moves up to second place and this again goes back to what I was thinking earlier where you know, when I first saw this GPU, I thought 1440p is going to be the ideal resolution. And I think these average results kind of speak to that point, right? So, again, you know, it looks like if you really want to get one of these, uh, 1440p is probably the best resolution to pair it up with. If we bump up to 4K, you know, it it's just not there. The performance, it's just, it's going to be below 60 most of the time. You're going to have to be compromising on graphic settings a lot. Um, out, of, out of all the GPUs that I tested, really the only one that can handle it is the 6700 XT. And that's kind of because it is up there with the 3070 and the 2080 Ti, which I do think those GPUs are what I consider like the minimum for 4K gaming. Um, so this GPU from AMD does meet that requirement. Um, but it is one thing though, in a couple of years, you know, how well... Will this GPU perform in newer titles at 4K? That's the reason why I consider all the GPUs that are shown in this review today, uh, in my mind, are 1440p GPUs, and they will always only ever be 1440p GPUs. So that's going to be it for the review video. Uh, I hope you guys liked the content on this video. It took me a lot of time to make this. I'm, uh, you know, my hats off to Harbor Unboxed. Gamers Nexus, all those other YouTubers out there that are well established and they you know, they can devote the time to benchmarking because going into this, I had no idea uh, the amount of work that it takes to benchmark games, especially as you start adding on GPUs. So as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the content and if you like this sort of uh, video and you want to support the channel, feel free to subscribe. It really does help me out. It does make me feel motivated to tr keep making uh, more useful videos um, for you guys that are tech enthusiasts like myself. 
Um, I even like wore my Intel Arc shirt here. You guys can see I got an Intel Arc uh, t-shirt uh, just to kind of go in theme with the review, right? So, like I said, uh, I'll be making more videos on Arc in the future. I plan to test AV1 encoding. Uh, unfortunately, you can't stream in AV1 as of yet, uh, but you can record gameplay. So we will be testing some recording functions with that card. Uh, we may try something like Handbrake or some other uh, applications that can make use of AV1 encode. Um, but like I said, you know, uh, I will be probably doing another live stream. We do plan to cover the Intel 13th Gen uh, coming up later this week. So if you guys are interested in that, we're going to be going over the motherboard block diagrams for Z790, comparing that to Z690, um, and we're going to eventually get around to comparing it head-to-head -head -head with AMD's platform. So we're going to be going up against the Ryzen 7950X, which I did do a lot of coverage on in terms of the motherboards on the channel. So I hope you guys like this content. If you're really a tech enthusiast and you... Are really interested in ARC, CPUs, overclocking, uh, UEFI, BIOS, random hardware, uh, you know, hardware unboxings and all, all that kind of stuff. This is the right place. Uh, and I guess hit that bell icon, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. As always, guys, uh, take care and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.